The summer before my freshman year, I volunteered at a sports camp for children with special needs. On the first day, I was assigned my camper, and his name was William. William said to me, well, yeah, sure, I'll be your friend, but when you let your guard down, I'm going to eliminate you. <laughs> this was pretty concerning for some of my fellow counselors, but for me, I was up for the challenge. I knew by the end of the week, William was going to love me. By the end of that week, I didn't feel the same way. I was beaten down and frustrated. I knew William wanted still dead. wanted to be dead. <laughs> I was only partially, was only listening, partially listening, listening when, we were, when we were talking about our favorite things about the week. When William was asked, I expected him to probably say soccer because he managed to hit me in the head with a soccer ball. When asked what his favorite thing about the week was, William looked straight at me and said, my favorite thing was Jackson. You see, William was my inspiration. He showed a level of love that not even I could understand. If I couldn't see it, obviously no one else could because that was my entire goal that week. He was the inspiration behind my passion project. For my passion project, I went to Lake Norman Charter Elementary School and did a presentation for the kids, not the adults, because they are the future for my project. I came in this football jersey and with a football in my hand, tossing around casually. I did that, one, because maybe it would command a little more respect from the kids and they listened to me a little bit better. Two, because it would get them thinking, well, he's the varsity quarterback. He probably only hangs out with the jocks and the cool kids. And they'd be, their minds would be blown when I told them that I'd do something very different from that. And three, because I think it makes my arms look pretty good. <laughs> my first lesson, I asked them to draw a dog. And that was the only thing. No requirements, no breed, shape, size, color, anything. Just draw me a dog. When they were done drawing, I collected them all and I showed them off, and we gave them about what some of them looked like, and then I brought them to a serious note. I said, sure, all these dogs have very distinct differences, but if you took them all to a dog park, wouldn't they chase the same ball, chew on the same bone, sniff each other's tails? We as humans need to mimic that type of oblivion to the physical and mental differences that we find so important in our society. For the second activity, I brought out a bag of peanut lover trail mix. And I asked the kids, if you could take one piece from this trail mix, what would it be? And the answer was a resounding, it's the M&M, it's the M&M, of course. And I asked them, but why? This is my peanut lover's trail mix. I'm obviously a peanut lover. Why don't you feel the same way? And they said things like, it's sweeter, it tastes better, it adds flavor to the trail mix. And I said, once again, you can relate this to your group of friends and the people around you. You should look for the M&Ms in your life, the people that are sweeter and that add flavor to your lives, not just the common kid, the cool kid, the regular peanuts. For my last activity, I showed them a picture of my dog Zoe because I didn't think I was able to bring it to the school. She has what you call an anxiety disorder, and many people would agree that associated with the word disorder means it's a bad thing. I argue with these kids that it's a great thing. It's, it's what makes Zoe who she is. She's much more loving, caring, sweet, and attentive than any dog I know. Sure, she's constantly underfoot. Sure, she whines like she swallowed a squeaky toy. But it makes her who she is. Through these lessons, I sent the kids out with a message that I'm going to send you guys out with too. We're all humans, and we're all social beings. We crave social interaction. It's what makes us the species that we are. So the next time that you see a man acting a little strange on the bus or at the park, he may obviously have a mental disability, instead of priding yourself and looking away, not staring, not causing attention to it, introduce yourself. Instead of telling your kid to hush when he's asking about the, the man very loudly, Dad, what's wrong with that man? Mom, why is he acting like that? You should introduce yourself. Introduce your kid. Tell them your name, your kid's name, ask their name. Ask about jobs, hobbies. All sorts of things. Get the conversation rolling because the time for isolation is over. Thank you.